How's it going everybody? It's Prod here and welcome back to another video. So literally two days ago, I just finished the Elden Ring DLC. Now, I absolutely loved it. I had a great time playing it. I want to maybe do another video where I kind of go more in depth on my opinion on everything, including like the characters and the NPCs and the world and like my opinion on stuff like the Skidoo tree. But for now, I want to do a tier list on all the main bosses of the DLC, either going to be like remembrance bosses or like mini bosses that actually are worth mentioning. So enjoy the list, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the bosses. So if you don't want spoilers for bosses, you know, we're gonna start off early until late game. So I'm gonna go in order pretty much of how I found them, right? So pretty much the first big boss that I discovered was the Divine Beast Dancing Lion. Now, I think this is a great first boss for the DLC. He's tough, he's fast, I would say he's the first one that kind of shows you like, oh, if you have low Skidoo level, you are going to get shit on. I think I was a level, I want to say three Skidoo level, maybe two when I fought him. He has massive moves that cover like the whole arena being either tornado attacks or the giant ice attacks that are frostbite or the spins that he does with like the gravel and the lightning, the lightning is still the worst of every single element especially in that boss room that i felt was too small even though it was like pretty moderately sized he just pressures you so much he pushes you right into the wall and sometimes that camera angle can be a little bit extreme where it just kind of pushes inside your own body so it's kind of hard to see anything the boss design is beautiful it's creepy it's weird. If you haven't seen the boss, it's essentially two guys inside of a big ass lion suit who dance around and jump around. It's crazy. It's a it's an amazingly designed boss. It's so weird and it works so well. The boss is is scary. You know, he has some giant moves that hurt a lot. But then when you eventually get him, you realize there's multiple of them throughout the game and you can sometimes just find them as like mini bosses and stuff. So you know, From Software loves doing that, giving you a really tough first challenge. Then once you get stronger and stronger and stronger, you run into them again later on and completely destroy them. And then you realize like, oh shit, you know, like I, maybe I have actually gotten way stronger and better at the game, which is cool. I like that progression, but I think it's a fantastic first boss. The only issue that I have with it is the fact that some of the moves can make it kind of frame rate laggy where it, it does get intense sometimes so the frame the frames will drop quite a bit i was playing on playstation 5 not even on pc as well maybe it might be a little bit better on pc if you, especially if you have a good pc like i have but i wanted to play it on ps5 and it, there's more people to invade and stuff on ps5 so it it struggled a little bit not too bad i wouldn't say it was like dark souls 1 blight town territory but there was a couple moments in that fight where it was kind of bad but overall i give the boss a b now, I also want to give a special shout out to some of the new jails, the new caves, the forges. I absolutely love them. I think especially the forges are so incredibly well designed. I think there was a thing, right, with the main game. A lot of people got kind of annoyed with the caves and the dungeons that felt like they all kind of were samey same. The new dungeons and caves and stuff are so well designed, man, from like starting off in a specific area and the fact that you have to jump down over the ledge onto a pod that goes onto another area that's downstairs and then it opens up another door. The verticality in this DLC is unbelievable. Like they went above and beyond. I think even the main game when it comes to like having stuff over ledges or really hiding secrets and really making good use out of that jump button that we've never had previous to Elden Ring. You know, it's they were cooking with these areas and some of the forges are so freaking cool. And you get forge golems that pet slimes. So what more could you want? So I just want to give a special shout out to them because I'm probably not going to put the jail bosses in in the, the tier list. We're only kind of talking about like main, main bosses. But some of them are pretty freaking cool. Now, technically, I think this was the first actual boss that I ran into. But the ghost flame dragons. I would say that the regular dragons were kind of the weakest part of the DLC 
most likely. And I say regular dragons because there's some abnormal dragons. We'll get into those in a little bit, right? But the regular dragons like the Ghost Flame Dragon um, was kind of just the samey same. You know, he was a little bit faster and it was cool to see Ghost Flame. And we did get a Ghost Flame Dragon Breath, which is kind of cool. And I haven't really used it yet, so I haven't seen how good it is. But it was a little bit more of the same from like the dragons in the main game. And there was quite a few of them. And I... The only one that was kind of interesting was the one that is in a war between some of the actual Mesmer Warriors. The only issue with that is they kind of do no damage to each other. You know, the dragon does a good amount of damage to the warriors, but they do nothing to him. I would have loved to be able to have like a situation where you watch them fight and they actually do damage to each other, you know? When you have an arrow that does a thousand damage to you and then it hits a dragon it does 20 damage you know it's kind of bullshit i would have loved even if it's like they destroy the dragon or the dragon destroys them at the end of the day it's kind of like a throwaway little dragon boss so it would have been more cool to see that than like them doing no damage to each other but then still kind of ganging up on you destroying you and just throwing another dragon in there especially it being the same ghost flame dragon wasn't a really big fan of that but overall still you know just kind of a dragon um i would probably put that like d tier relana the twin moon knight probably the boss that was i think the one that's taken me second to the final boss the most attempts incredibly fast really high damaging non-stop combos and this is really where the skidoo tree level kind of you start to see it matter in my opinion. I was a pretty low skidoo level for the boss. I think I was about three or four, quite possibly. It was pretty low. And I struggled with this boss for like two and a half hours. I think it took like close to 100 attempts. It was, at the time, my favorite boss. Incredibly cool looking boss. Some of the coolest moves. Probably has one of the coolest second phase transitions with the moons super brutal combos like that's kind of where you start to learn that oh the bosses are going to be having 20 hit combos where you have one chance to attack and get a hit and stuff like that super cool armor interesting lore her connection with mesmer and everything using both uh her own uh, magic kind of attachment to renala and being her her sister and everything having that magic sword and having the attachment to mesmer and using that mesmer fire sword interesting lore very cool boss, very difficult if you do it at a low skidoo level. And I say that because Miss Valentine, my girlfriend, went into the boss with a slightly higher skidoo level, I think only like three more levels, and absolutely destroyed the boss, got it first try. So if you're good at the game and then also have a decent skidoo level, like you'll probably do pretty well against this boss. But I absolutely love this boss and I will put it at an A tier. Next up is the Putrescent Knight. Real interesting boss, rides around on a horse, kind of reminded me of the original Radon boss fight in the main game. And I really enjoyed what they did with the boss fight. Um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, it had some moves similar to one of the bosses from Lords of the Fallen that's pretty early on that also rides around on a horse and uses thorn attack weapons goes underground with this horse and then the horse comes out and kind of runs at you he kind of has similar moves to that except the horse runs at you and then he jumps at you and then the horse runs at you again and then he jumps on you and then he jumps out and gets on the horse it's an interesting battle between him and his horse and then you does by the way a shit ton of damage but i really love the the lead up to him i love the underground area having to go th down all these ancient tombs the boss room as well looks super cool reminds me a lot of madir's cave his second phase transition is also super super weird pretty enjoyable boss overall like not super super difficult doesn't have like crazy 20 hit combos only about 10 hit combos enjoyable boss nothing too crazy though and there is a nice little secret but overall, the experience of going down through the cave, I would easily give this boss a B tier. The next boss I ran into is the spiky bastard, the golden hippopotamus. This boss, I don't know, I've kind of been going back and forth, right? Because I like the design, I think he looks cool, I think he's kind of interesting, he's sort of weird. But man, is he an annoying freaking boss. 
because the boss room is so tiny and apparently by the way his his grab attack which i felt it too i felt that it was way too powerful it actually was indeed glitched when i fought him and i'm sure many of you fought him there was just a patch that made it so that his bite grab attack actually had a worse hitbox because it was hitting people way too often apparently and it wasn't intended to be doing that so it actually did get patched and you're in such a small boss room and some of his moves can just be kind of annoying and while i think he was cool and i like the way it looks and i think he's kind of cute with his big ass head i'm gonna have to give the boss a a c just a c tier and it's mainly because of his looks and his cool hair but other than that, it's there's not really much to the boss, but I don't think it deserves a D tier. So we're going to pop it right in the middle, kind of like a regular average boss, right in the C tier. And next up is the poster boy for Elden Ring DLC, and that is Mesmer and all his 18 inches. I feel like that meaning has really gotten away from us, huh? But he's been, you know, hyped up. He was, you know, like I said, the poster boy for the DLC. I think everybody thought he was going to be like the Melania. And I did mention it. I've said it a couple of times where I don't know if he's going to be that that difficult boss. I don't think he's going to be that Melania level boss for the DLC. And boy, was I right, because while he is cool, he's not incredibly difficult. Now, I, I do say that from beating him relatively quickly. I think it took me about like under 30 attempts, which, you know, for a DLC hard boss is pretty good, to be honest. But I love the design of the boss. I think he looks so cool. I, I love the, the snakes on his shoulders. I love the second phase transition with the cutscene and everything it is brutal. It's, it's amazing looking. I love the lore to him. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like is the, the boss room. I don't know, I felt like it should have been more extravagant for a boss that they hyped up so much. But I guess it makes more sense when you learn about the lore, right? He was a character that obviously is Marika's son and she kind of hid him in this world of shadow and he rebelled and fucking became basically a, a, a psychopath who destroyed and leveled an entire city. and basically has almost destroyed the entirety of the shadow the shadowlands i guess you could you call them i don't know what they call them i can't remember but he reminded me of like a classic souls boss where i felt that he while he was fast and he had fast moves and he had combos it felt fair like there was moves that you can easily punish for example the big ass snake when he turns into the big ass snake in the second phase and drops down like a nuke like a fire nuke that explodes if you learn how to dodge that which is not that hard it's kind of pretty easily timed you basically have a good time to just wail on him and get yourself a big damage combo and i feel like you can't really do that with a lot of bosses it felt like a really nice back and forth where he had moments where he stopped and you were able to hit him. He didn't feel like overly like crazy high poise where you couldn't stagger him. He felt pretty fair overall in my opinion. But I love the design of him. I love his weapon in his hands because in our hands, it kind of sucks ass. While I feel like he didn't exactly live up to the difficulty hype that a lot of people may be expected from him, at least in my own opinion, he was an amazingly designed boss, cool, second phase, awesome lore, and I give him an A. Next up on the list is Commander Gaius, which funny enough is actually the video I'm actually literally editing uh, right now. Now we're talking combos. This guy has some monster combos. And not only is it his own weapon combos, they're combined with a giant boar who does massive damage and has a big ass head. So it's kind of hard to escape the combos sometimes, but it didn't feel again, like unfair. The boss I think is pretty well designed, especially for a boss that could be way more annoying because he's on, on the back of a horse, or excuse me, a, a big ass boar. But his weapon was cool, I love the gravity attacks that he did, it was awesome to see some similar moves to like Radon and some of the stuff he does, and it makes more sense when you get into the lore and realize that they were taught by the same master, 
they both had unusual pets and overall became pretty good like rivals. But overall the boss was cool. Um, and while the boar can get a little bit annoying, especially with its charge attacks being so hard to dodge sometimes, the boss was great and I give it a B. Next up we have a weird one that maybe a lot of people didn't end up doing because it is kind of a secret boss. But we're talking about Metir? At least I think that's how you say it, the giant finger boss. This thing, first of all, has maybe the coolest boss room in the entire DLC. At least the trippiest freaking boss room. But I think this boss, when it mixed with its moves, is so just visually stunning. Really fun to fight, actually, in my opinion. I think she has some really, really cool moves. Some of them kind of annoying. The finger attacks where she moves her fingers and runs towards you with our fingers can be a literal one-shot machine. But overall, not really too difficult. Just looks so cool as well though. I, I absolutely love this boss and I'm gonna put her at an A tier. And especially if you mix together all the stuff that happens after, after fighting her and killing her and then going into the boss room and actually fighting Ymir, um, definitely an A tier. I think this thing has like multiple steps. I had, a, I had a good time with the quests. I thought the quest was real interesting, real weird as well. It felt really trippy to go to these finger areas. So A tier for me. The next boss that I ran into was Jory Elder Inquisitor. Now this was one of, again, sort of like a more secret boss because he's kind of like in a little, very little hidden area. And then you kind of discover this whole giant madness area. But overall, Jory himself, I thought was kind of a weak boss. Not necessarily weak himself. I mean, more like the design of the boss was kind of weak. Um, he was just kind of a spam fest. It felt like I was fighting a bunch of gankers in PvP where they just shoot spells nonstop, invisible enemies. Even though I'm glad some of his little peons that he sends after you are sort of weaker, I just think that he himself was kind of lackluster. You and he's sort of like a regular enemy, just sort of taller. You run into, you know, 50 other versions of him later on. And I just wasn't a big fan of the fight. While he leads you into one of the coolest, if not the coolest area in the whole DLC, I think overall him as a boss fight was just kind of weak, not really too impressive, and pretty easy, generally speaking. So I'm gonna give him a D. Now from the D tier of Jory, it leads us into Midra which was the next boss that I ran into, the last boss in the little madness area that we are in. And Midra is freaking amazing. What a boss fight this was, honestly. Didn't feel too unfair when it comes to the crazy ass combos. The cutscene into the main boss from the little old guy who takes this sword out of his head and then becomes this Lord of Frenzied Flame is so freaking cool. Reminded me of the Frenzied Flame ending in the main game. The transition into phase two, lighting the whole arena on fire. This boss has some of the coolest freaking moves. You know, you it, it felt like, you know, like I mentioned earlier with Mesmer, sort of like an old school Souls boss. It didn't feel like it had this 10 hit combo attacks. It kind of had slower attacks that did high damage and you had a good amount of chance to attack back and do big damage. But if even if it were just talking about looks and the moves that this boss has, absolute top tier, A tier. And I'm realizing right now, by the way, after recording this whole thing, A tier is essentially gonna be my S tier. There is no S tier. Not that there's no S tier bosses, but because I forgot. Next, we got the Skadoo Tree Avatar. And again, this is the order in which I reach them. Other people might have reached bosses in a different order, but the Skadoo Tree Avatar was the next big boss that I ran into. And while I love the boss room, I love the design of this area. I love the fact that he's hidden underneath Mesmer's castle and you have to drain the water to go find him. He's kind of an annoying boss. I love the second phase transitions, his explosion when he puts his arms to the side and extends his arm and explodes. It looks super cool, super cute. 
But the boss is overall kind of annoying. I hate when they do this thing with bosses where you kind of do low damage on everything except one specific spot and that being his big ass flower head below average below normal damage to his body and his his stems and then you do an insane amount of damage to his little fucking sunflower head and when you kill him once he respawns again and there's another and then you kill that one and there's another and i think i fought three and i believe people said that if you don't repost them you can fight an infinite amount you can fight up to five i had somebody say that they went up to five different flowers i'm not sure the exact number but i believe i fought three personally and i think the fact that it's such a, a big difference in damage and some of his moves are, are very hard to see and kind of annoying i would give this boss a c tier and that's mainly exclusively because he i like his transition into phase two i love the fact that he's like you know keeps coming back until you repost him i love his explosion attacks i love the look of him and the lore and the area but he himself as a boss not the greatest so just a c tier he's kind of average next we head into the jagged peaks where we start running into some big old dragons and i guess you can say this is a boss and we could add it onto here but ancient dragon senesax so much sax involved in dragons now let me just tell you this whole boss could just be straight up deleted i think it kind of minimizes a little bit the next boss that we're about to talk about this boss is straight up infuriating i did not like this boss one bit you know because he's the same old type of peanut headed dragon you know we're talking about this with the flower this is 10 times worse than the flower you know i hate these bosses or excuse me these dragons in the main game i hate the fact that you could only really do damage on their little ass peanut heads that they don't leave still for a moment the fact that you had to fight this boss in water not only that but he had delayed red lightning attacks that did a shit ton of damage and is right before a major 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 boss fight I think this boss is F tier. I, I put this in the, the lowest possible that I can. I think he was the, the worst boss in the DLC. And I feel like he could just straight up be taken out. And it would only improve the, the next fight and the area, in my opinion. Now, we have another incredible boss. Curse you! I hereby vow, you will rue this day. Behold, a true great warrior, and I, Egon, your fears made flesh. Solid of scale you might be, foul dragon, but I will riddle with holes your rotten hide with a hail of harpoons. The Dread. Legitimately was probably one of the most hyped bosses that first of all every single person spoiled for me pretty much every single person spoiled for me i couldn't really get past the fact that uh there was a gigantic dragon even though i read the lore you know you get an item earlier in the game that tells you about this dragon named bale being an evil dragon who fought uh placidus axe and he's the dragon who mortally wounded placidus axe and took off multiple of its heads people still try their best to spoil and backseat as much as they possibly could while fighting the boss and attacking the boss but not only is the boss fight incredible super super cool the transition into the second phase is one of the most epic things you'll encounter in this entire game but you also have such a cool quest line you have igon's quest line the dude who yells curse you bale literally in the coolest like entrance and i guess dialogue that he has whenever you fight bale with him and do his quest line and stuff absolutely unbelievable boss very fun as well to fight even though he's pure chaos and and destruction in the actual boss fight and you'll you'll see that a little bit through a little bit of the gameplay that i'll be showing and it's so funny to see the fact that just this little guy ended up 
having beef with a essentially something that mortally wounded a god dragon. He himself is essentially a god. I love that whole questline. It was easily my favorite NPC of the DLC and is so epic. This is a S slash S tier boss, 100%. Next up, we have the Ultimate Gank Squad. Now, I don't know if this was because of the way I decided to go with Leda's quest. I don't know if it could have gotten any different. I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll see when I do a second playthrough of the DLC. But you had to fight Leda. You had to fight Dane, Dryleaf Dane, who has the martial arts. You had to fight more with the, the such a kind soul. You had to fight Freya. And the only person you have on your side is Theolia, and then some random fucking nobody who does bleed. This boss, while it was, I think, because of the lore and the interactions with the NPCs and seeing these NPCs was kind of sad. It was kind of sad to see the fact that you kind of have to fuck them up and how she betrays you and attacks you the same way she kind of made you go and and help her and attack some of the other NPCs. She's kind of a psychopath, you know? At the end of the day, it's just a straight up 4v1 if you don't summon anybody, 4v3. Uh, if you do summon the NPCs that I had, you guys may have more NPCs along with you. I believe in this situation, if you don't kill Ansbach, I believe he helps you. So it would have been much better if I didn't end up going along with Leda and helping her kill him. But I think the boss fight is just kind of like you getting the shit beat out of you and ganked. So nothing too crazy. While well, I think the interactions between the NPCs and Theolia talking to like more and being apologetic about having to fight him. And, you know, obviously the feelings you have fighting some of the NPCs that I, I personally like, like more. But overall, the fight is just kind of an average fight. I'm just going to give it a, uh, a C tier. Just kind of an average fight. Maybe even more leaning towards D tier. Now, I'm actually going to add this here because I realized while editing, I completely forgot about Ramana. You guys know that hot ass centipede. I mean, centipede that you end up fighting that is all pink and has a bunch of like scarlet rod attacks. I actually was a big fan of the fight. I think when it comes to like weird bug fights, comparing like her to Quaylog from Dark Souls 1, you can kind of see that evolution in those type of fights. I think that she had some really cool moves, really creative use of the weird centipede and the weird body shape, along with being just straight up visually stunning, especially when jumping into the second phase. I think this is a easy B tier boss for me. And now we arrive at the end and we head into the final boss. Of course, that being the promised consort Radon. Now, first of all, I just wanna say yes. The fact that the final boss was Radon was spoiled by a chat member literally my first day streaming the DLC, which sucks, you know, like it, it's so unfortunate the fact that like I love the DLC, but the experience of streaming the whole thing and the backseating and, and the spoilers and people trying to ruin quests and not being patient with me, the fact that I was finding my own way to things and areas and secrets. It it's so unfortunate how much that deteriorated, deteriorated. Dear God, I had a fucking aneurysm. That first playthrough, even though I still loved it, and I think it's a 10 out of 10 DLC in my opinion. It's so unfortunate. Like I think people, you know, I don't know if it's because people think like streamers are just straight up idiots. I don't know if they have no patience, no filter. Like people need to to chill with that type of thing man like in the future some of your favorite streamers are going to end up just doing shit offline because it it does hurt the the first playthrough you know it's i i think it could have been such a better playthrough people were were i don't know more patient or less backseaty or trying to spoil literally every single moment of every single quest and secret item in the entire game and that's not a joke if you were in any of the chats on Twitch or YouTube, and especially if you were one of those people, let me just tell you, nobody likes it. You know, imagine your first playthrough, you were able to play it by yourself just fine. Now imagine if you had somebody in the back of your ear telling you, that guy goes in the face too. Oh, there's a secret around that corner. Literally, like some people like it, of course, some people like doing everything with guides and shit. But if the, if the person you're watching doesn't like that, 
I feel like being pushy about it is the worst thing you can do. You're just gonna get yourself hated by everybody and fucking blocked maybe by the, the streamer. Now enough on my rant. Let's go ahead and talk about Radon, the boss fight. Obviously, I think it's a controversial thing to have Radon as the final boss. I think a lot of people are gonna see it as, oh, just Radon again. But let me tell you how much difference a pair of legs makes. A pair of legs and one less little horse. What a fucking fight. Uh, the first phase, and of course there are two phases to this boss fight. The first phase is so much fun. I absolutely love the first phase of this boss fight because it's such a great back and forth. While he does have a lot of combos, there's a lot of spots if you really learn the fight. There's a lot of spots you can get a hit here and there. It's I feel more of a struggle if you have a slower weapon where there's going to be less opportunities. But he's such a cool fight. The, the first cutscene of him standing there being a literal fucking the ultimate Giga Chad just standing there. The pride of the lion is so freaking cool. And then we get into the second phase. Now, I love the, the, the cutscene. I love the transition into the second phase. The second phase is, I will say, while I loved it, and I think it's visually stunning, it's a little much. It's a little much. I think visually especially is the biggest part about it, where it's a little bit too much. There's too much... I don't know, like visual noise like happening where it's sort of hard to kind of keep up with Radon himself. Him having Mikkel on his back and this giant, while it looks beautiful and it looks like he has a lovely, a lovely wig. Mikkel being on his back just makes it so hard to see when he's going to do some moves. The only way you can really do it is if you remember the specific, for example, every time he does a step slam with his foot, he always does the same one swipe that's fast, second swipe that's a little bit slower, and then a slam down attack, and then a light beam attack. That's what I remember in my head, at least. There might be a, a move in there that I completely am forgetting about now because it was like two days ago. But unless you remember that, it's fucking hard to see because Mikola and the light everywhere, in case you don't know, after every single attack, there is a secondary attack that shoots a, a beam of light down or up, I don't know what it does, but not only does it do damage, it's bright, and it staggers you. I think a great way to fix this boss fight would be to make that light move not stagger you and make it maybe a little bit less bright. I think it might be just a little bit too distracting, especially when you have a boss fight that does a ton of damage to you and has these crazy ass legit no joke 10 hit combos. And me saying 10 hit combos is not an over exaggeration. And it doubles that with the light attacks, which is fucking crazy. Visually stunning, but a little bit too much and kind of can be a little bit distracting. And I think it's going to minimize the, the fight for a lot of people. Now, first of all, I want to say the boss fight was difficult. It took me about five hours in one sitting. I did end up doing it at Skidoo level 18, rune level 150, um, plus 24 weapon, not fully upgraded, but... It was a, a great weapon, it still did a lot of damage. I'm happy with my choice of the Sword of Lands to fight the boss, but overall, I think that this boss is going to be very controversial, and I see it already. You know, I after I finished it, if you go to the comment section, and it's not to throw shade at anybody, of course, um, but you see that a lot of people felt not a sense of satisfaction to this, but almost like, oh, I'm glad it's over and I don't have to fight him anymore. Which I don't think it's what they want I from software. You know, they want people like, you know, like I was so fucking happy because not only was I extremely hungry when I finished and you'll see that when the playthrough gets around to it, which should, shouldn't be too long. I'm, I feel like I'm doing an okay job editing them pretty quickly. But um, when you get when I get to that point, you'll see how fucking hungry I was. I had woken up like at you know, 10 a.m. and then instantly started streaming after a couple hours and it was like 8 p.m. and I hadn't eaten anything because the stream was like seven hours in and people were like telling me to go eat, go eat, you'll do better tomorrow, you'll do better later. And I was like, no, no, give me a couple more attempts, like 30 more minutes of like a couple of attempts. And then I ended up getting it in a great run. By the, by the end of that, I was a fucking expert at that first phase. I knew every single move. I knew every single move in the second phase. The only issue 
is the fact that he just does a ridiculous amount of damage and these light attacks are just some of them are impossible to freaking dodge and i can understand people's frustrations for how annoying the boss was even though i actually really enjoyed the boss i thought the boss was freaking amazing and i do think that the the amount of distractions there are in the second phase can be a little bit annoying um i think the boss is amazing and i don't know i i thought it might have been harder i'm gonna be honest i thought it should have been a little bit more difficult and i it was difficult but the way people were describing this boss was like the fucking next coming of jesus the devil arrived he is the most impossible boss in the history of souls games you know, people could only beat him by cheesing him and, and, you know, using glitches on him. And I was like, fuck, is this boss really this hard? And the fact that it only took me like five hours when I think Melania took me like seven. I think, you know, Orphan of Cause at Rune Level 1 or, or Blood Level 4, excuse me, took me multiple days to beat. It was actually surprising, like how kind of normal it was, even though it was difficult, obviously, but... Overall, in an amazing boss, the lore leading up to it, I, I love the, the moves between him and Mikola. I I love the, the cutscene that you get afterwards with Mikola um, and, and the little bits of lore of him choosing Radon as his consort. The transition, he has a specific move that's similar to the move where he jumped down from the stratosphere with Leonard. Which, by the way, where is Leonard? Did he eat him? I'm pretty sure he ate him to get these legs that he's got, which is fucked up. I thought it would, might've been what they should've done. It should've been Radon and then Mikkel on his back and then Leonard on his back. That's what they should've done. That would've been a fucking beyond S tier boss. But still, I will give Radon an A slash S tier. Uh, I think the moves were incredibly fun while the light attacks can get sort of annoying. Um, they're not too crazy because they don't do a, they don't do as much damage as him hitting you with his weapon. So I give it a uh, an A slash S tier. I love the fight. I thought it should have been a little bit more difficult. Or maybe not should have been, but I thought it would have been uh, considering how people were talking about him. But overall, the DLC was was peak Elden Ring. You know, it was everything we loved about Elden Ring. And we were absolutely right that some of the best bosses were going to be in the DLC with bosses like Radon and like Midra and Bale. Like, some of these bosses are so fucking cool, and it's so sad we're not going to get another DLC, and now we have to wait probably multiple years, maybe like two years before we get another FromSoft game. But it's uh, it's incredible, you know, who knows what they're cooking for the future. I know Miyazaki said that even with Elden Ring being the success and the giant game that it is, it's still apparently not his ideal RPG, which I don't know what the fuck he wants. He wants to be able to be in space or something, you know, something crazy. Who knows what they're cooking next, and I'm excited to see for the future. But let me know your guys' thoughts on on the bosses. Shit, even if you guys want to make your own tier list on the bottom with all the bosses that I included in here and give them your own rating, feel free to do that. I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comments section down below. Let me know what you thought of the DLC, positive or negative. It's an open space. You know, I don't want people attacking people who didn't like the DLC or any of the bosses. Unless you're outwardly straight up just being a hater, you know. But you can kind of tell. If you have an opinion that you didn't like the DLC, that's totally fine as well. I personally enjoyed it. And I really hope that you all did as well. Because, um... Nothing like a good old From Software game to kind of bring the community together. But I appreciate everybody who watched this and made it this far. God damn, this was probably a long video. Anyways, thank you all so much for joining me today. And subscribe if you're not already subbed and leave a like. We still got the playthrough ongoing and you'll see my reactions to every single boss fight that you saw on this tier list coming soon. But anyways, have yourselves a good one and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye everybody.